Intrepidos Punks is the unholy love child of biker flicks and punk exploitation, cranking every dial to 11. That makes this 1980 Mexican gem, directed by Francisco Guerrero, better than even the OG Mad Max. This is the true leader of the pack. And as far as the punk exploitation goes, it stands taller than the genre classics like Class of 1984 and Never Too Young to Die. This batshit crazy film takes everything awesome about film misrepresentation of the punks and blends it with every convention of exploitation films, giving you drugs, orgies, super cool hair, satanic rituals, red rum, great loud music, etc, etc. The film opens with a few nuns walking into a bank and looting it without much fuss. After all, they aren't nuns but female members of the titular bike gang, intrepidos punks. They need cash to buy weapons and drugs. And what do they need these for? To free the imprisoned male members of the gang, of course. But before we get to the superbly convoluted scheme, we get a transformation sequence that puts Superman's phone booth changes to shame. These nuns strip down to reveal leather thongs, metal tops, chains, and fluorescent punk rock hair that looks like it was styled with radioactive Kool-Aid, or was it with glow stick? Leading this merry band of misfits is Beast, played by the aptly named Princess Leah. I dare you to name a better named actor. Rocking a studded leather bikini and a gravity-defying platinum blonde, do, she's a sight to behold. But for my money, the real scene stealer is the chick with choppy red hair and spider web face paint. Move over, Susie Sue. The girls next kidnap the wives of prison officials, but when Beast makes the ransom calls, everyone is too busy with an orgy to answer it. Of course, she goes into rage and permits some of her male punks grape the wives. The men appear to howl and giggle, rolling on top of the screaming women, while their in-house rock band sets up in the living room. But the cops still won't listen and leave Beast no alternative but to mail a chopped hand to them. No more plot from me, but we also follow two mustachioed cops occasionally. These heroes appear far more evil than the mad villains, evil with intelligence to cover it up. The punks, on the other hand, are more like wild animals, mostly communicating in howls and growls like some Technicolor tribe raised by wolves and CBGB regulars. They can't be evil because they are Beast and Spider. It's Sid Vicious by way of Tarzan. It's not an anarchic rebellion against the norms of society, rather a complete lack of knowledge of the existence of such norms. An extreme revelation of the ID, especially because the only character the punks have is the color of their hair. Extremely mad, goofy entertainment. Do not miss this, if you are exploitation cinema devotees, and also do not miss two. Like, share, high five, subscribe, let our channel thrive.